Okay, so in today's lab tutorial, we'll be doing the free fall experiment. Now, the purpose of this lab is to determine g, the acceleration due to gravity, for a free falling object. Now, with the amount of data that we're going to collect, we're going to be able to solve for g four different ways. And then after we calculate g, we're going to compare it to 9.8 meters per second squared using the percent different equation. Now, the percent different equation is the absolute value of the measured number minus the true value over the true value times 100. Be sure to use MKS units when solving for G. Otherwise, instead of 9.8, you might end up with 980. Um, also, during this lab, we're going to utilize three equations that we should be familiar with. Now, these equations are V bar equals D final minus D initial over T final minus T initial. Um, we also have acceleration, which is G, equals V final minus V initial over T, which then equals GT plus V initial equals V final. And our final equation will be distance equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT. We'll use these two equations to solve for G. The four different ways we'll solve for G is through two equations, one graph, and one curve fitting. Now, let's take a look at the setup. Up here we have a holder, which is for the metal ball or the marble, and it has jaws that we can open and close to release the marble to start the free fall. And here we have IA. Now IA should be set up approximately five centimeters away from the holder, and we do this so that we have a V initial, which is also referred to as VA. Um, now IA should always stay at a set position. In order to change the distances between the two I, you're going to move IB, which is down here. And another thing to keep in mind is that the time it takes to, for the marble to get from IA to IB is time AB. During the last lab, we only focused on TAB, but in this lab, we'll also keep record of TA and TB. So the lights on here are going to indicate what time you're reading. Make sure that you know these three times because they're all very important. Now, for example, we can take TA and we can actually solve how quickly the marble moved through IA. When the marble enters the beam, the timer begins, and when it exits, the timer ends. Now, something we'll need to measure is the ball's diameter, because V initial equals the ball's diameter over TA. Be sure to use a micrometer when measuring this, and remember that the reading error is plus or minus 0 0.005 millimeters, or plus or minus 0 0.000005 meters. While doing this lab, make sure that your physics stand is lined up completely straight, so that when you drop the ball here, it passes through directly through the lines and lands in the cup. Now, if the ball doesn't land in the cup, don't count that data because that's not good. You need to make sure that it perfectly lines up because say the ball passes through beam IA only slightly, then that's going to mess up your V initial and that won't be consistent. Also make sure that the electric guys aren't, aren't crooked, make sure that they're completely straight across. You're going to set up the electric eyes at different distances by moving IB. And in this lab, you're going to be starting with 15 centimeters. OK, let's talk about the data tables. First off, make sure you have the ball's diameter. Use a ruler to measure the distances. Uh, the reading error on this is plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeters, or plus or minus 0 0.0005 meters. And the timer has a reading error of plus or minus 0 0.00005 seconds. Now remember to add on a zero to the end of your recorded time for the timer. And this will be your standard guess throughout the lab. Now the table is set up as follows. Your first distance will be 15 centimeters. From there, you'll record time AB, time A, and time B. Be sure to repeat this for three times. After you have three times for each, find the averages. Remember to keep track of error while doing this. You repeat this for each distance, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. By the end of this, you'll have eight distances with nine times each, giving you 72 times total. Now, this is going to allow for lots of averaging. The next thing we're going to do is move on to the analysis, which is broken up into seven parts. For the first step, you'll compute the averages of time A, time B, and time AB for each of the eight drops. In step two, you'll compute VA, which is also referred to as V initial, and VB, also referred to as V final. To do this, you'll divide the ball's diameter by the average of TA. You're then going to add all this information into your data table. Now, since you didn't move IA, all your TA should be about the same, 
Uh, they might be different due to error, but all your TA should be pretty similar. Um, now in step three, you're going to average all eight VAs to get VA or V initial. You'll use the largest error as your reading error, and depending on how your tests go, you'll either use the reading error or the RMS error. And in step four, you're going to solve for G. First, use the equation V final equals V initial plus G, which is really VB equals VA plus GTAB. Do this for all eight times. Now, at this point, you should have eight Gs. What you're going to do is you're going to find an average for all these Gs, but don't worry about error. Now, from there, you're going to compare what you found for an average G to 9.8 meters per second squared using the percent difference equation. In step five, you're going to use a graph to solve for G. You'll make a velocity versus time graph. Be sure to graph your eight points, which are your Gs in this case. Um, this should end up being a straight line, so create a line of best fit to find the equation and the R values. The slope of this graph should be 9.8 meters per second squared. Use the percent difference equation to compare your slope with 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, another thing this graph will tell you is the initial velocity, which is the y-intercept. Compare the y-intercept to the initial using the percent difference equation. For step six, you'll solve for g using the equation distance equals one-half at squared plus vit. Your distances will range from 15 to 50. t is going to be tab, and vi will be the average va. Solve for all eight g's and then average them. Once you have this average G, compare it to 9.8 meters per second squared using the percent difference equation. Now, this next step is just for the honor skits. You'll use your distance versus time data, which in this case is DAB versus TAB, and you'll fit it to the equation distance equals AT squared plus BT plus C. A is supposed to be 1 half G, so compare A to 1 half 9.8 using the percent difference equation. And B is supposed to be VI, so compare B to VI using the percent difference equation.